Attorney General, you've told us that it's a dangerous conspiracy theory to allege that the Department of Justice is communicating with these state and local prosecutions against Trump. You can clear it all up for us right now. Will the Department of Justice provide to the committee all documents, all correspondence between the department and Alvin Bragg's office and Fonnie Willis's office and Letitia James's office? The offices you're referring to are independent offices of state. I get of, that. I get that. State. The question Matt Gates absolutely goes after Attorney General Merrick Garland with everything he's got while standing strong in defense of Donald Trump. Matt Gates doesn't hold back as he takes Merrick Garland to task, showing just how far he's willing to go to back Donald Trump. Watch as Matt Gates puts the pressure on and makes his point loud and clear. Is whether or not you will provide all of your documents and correspondence. That's the question. It's, I, I don't need a, a history lesson. Well, I'm going to say again, we do not control those offices. They make yeah, their the own decisions. The question is whether decisions. you communicate with them, not whether you control them. Do you communicate with them and will you provide those communications? You make a request. We'll refer it to our Office of Legislative but, Affairs. But see, here's the thing. You come in here and you lodge this attack that it's a conspiracy theory that there is coordinated lawfare against Trump. And then when we say, fine, just give us the documents, give us the correspondence, and then if it's a conspiracy theory, that will be evident. But when you say, well, we'll take your request and then we'll, we'll sort of work it through the DOJ's accommodation process, then you're actually advancing the very dangerous conspiracy theory that you're concerned about. Now, you're, you were a judge, once nominated the highest court in our country. When you were a judge, I'm just curious, did you ever make political donations to partisan candidates? No. No, and, and you didn't because that would create the potential appear appearance of impropriety. I didn't because there's a federal rule oh. barring federal judges from making contributions. Right, but, but under that same theory of attacks on the judicial process, like shouldn't someone be owed like a jury of their peers and a judge that's non-biased rather than getting a judge from your political opponent's donor file? I'm well aware that you're not asking a hypothetical. You're asking me to comment on a verdict, jury verdict in a, another jurisdiction which has to be respected. I won't comment on it. That case is still ongoing. The defense Mr. Attorney General, I hadn't asked you about the verdict yet. We were getting there. I was, I was talking about the judge. And so, so let me ask you this question about your time as, as a judge. Was there ever a time when you were a judge when you had a family member who was personally profiting off of the notoriety of a case that, that was before your court? I'm going to say again very clear you're asking me to comment on a case in another jurisdiction. No, 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 wait, hold on, hold on, Mr. Attorney General. Did you ever have a family member profit off of the notoriety of any case that you sat over? Say again, you're asking, yes or no? me, you're asking me to comment on a case currently. Well, it seems you're connecting the dots, court. Mr. Attorney General. I'm just asking you as to a general principle, but you are aware that Judge Mershon's daughter was profiting off of this prosecution. You are aware that that creates the appearance of impropriety. You know, the very reason there's a federal rule against judges giving donations is because it is the very attack on the judicial process that we're concerned about. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe. Sorry, I don't agree with anything you just said, but I'm not going to comment on a, okay, on so you won't comment on it, Mr. Court. Attorney General, but you had no problem dispatching Matthew Colangelo. Who's Matthew Colangelo? That is false. I did not dispatch Matthew Colangelo. Matthew, Colangelo, Matthew Colangelo became the Assistant Attorney General at the very beginning of the Biden administration, without having been Senate confirmed, goes and gets the senior role at the DOJ, and then after, I believe it's uh, Gupta replaces Colangelo, Colangelo makes this remarkable downstream career journey from the U.S. Department of Justice in Washington, D.C., and then pops up in Alvin Bragg's office to go get Trump. And you're saying that's just a, that's just a career choice that was made that has nothing to do with the lawfare coordinated I'm by the saying country. it's false. I did not dispatch Mr. Colangelo anywhere. Well, do you know how he ended up there? I assume he spoke, uh, he applied for a job there and got the job. But see, you know I what? I tell you, know, you I had nothing to do with it. Well, you might not have had anything to do with it, but we've got this contemporaneous evidence in Mr. Pomerantz's book. So Pomerantz writes this book, which I'm sure you're aware of, where he says, we put together the legal eagles to get Trump. We got all these folks together and we assembled them for that purpose. And so when, when we on the Judiciary Committee think about attacks on the judicial process, our concern is that you, the, the facts and the law aren't being followed. A target is acquired here, Trump, and then you assemble the legal talent from DOJ, Mr. Pomerantz, and you bring everybody in to get him. And, I, I really, I, I, and meanwhile, the judge is making money on it. The I, judge is making money on it, or the judge's family is making money on it for stuff that you yourself wouldn't do. You know, no one's going to buy this. No one's going to believe it. It's going to create great disruption. And I am saddened by it because like you, I have given my life to the law. I care deeply about the law. And I think that the lawfare we've seen against President Trump will do great damage well beyond our time. All right, here's my take on what happened between Matt Gates and Merrick Garland. This wasn't just a routine questioning. It was a full-on clash of two very different approaches to power and accountability. Gates came in guns blazing, 
trying to corner Garland on whether the DOJ has been secretly coordinating with state prosecutors to target Trump. Garland, on the other hand, stayed calm and played by the book, deflecting by saying those offices are independent and refusing to give any direct answers. Gates's strategy was clear. He wanted to expose what he sees as political bias and double standards in the justice system. He hammered Garland about transparency, fairness, and even brought up potential conflicts of interest, like the judge's daughter allegedly profiting from the Trump case. The way Gates framed it, it's all part of a bigger narrative that Trump is being unfairly targeted by a coordinated effort. Garland, meanwhile, stuck to his role as attorney general by refusing to comment on ongoing cases or hypothetical situations. He leaned heavily on procedural answers, which, let's be honest, didn't satisfy Gates or anyone looking for clear, direct responses. The tension really escalated when Gates brought up Matthew Colangelo, suggesting he was strategically placed in Alvin Bragg's office to go after Trump. Garland flat out denied having any involvement, but Gates doubled down, citing claims that a legal task force was assembled specifically to take Trump down. Garland stuck to his line, but Gates made it clear he wasn't convinced. From a political perspective, this was a masterclass in two opposing strategies. Gates played to the crowd, using fiery rhetoric and pointed questions to frame this as a fight against a corrupt system targeting Trump. Garland, on the other hand, avoided getting dragged into the drama, sticking to formalities and refusing to engage with the accusations directly. The big takeaway here is the growing divide over how people view the justice system. To some, Gates's questioning highlights legitimate concerns about fairness and accountability. To others, it might just come off as political grandstanding. Either way, this clash is part of a bigger story about trust, or lack of it, in American institutions. Service.